bless you, bless you. I pray the Lord today is going to truly bless your life with wisdom, with his word. And to Jesus be the praise and the glory and the honor and the dominion and the majesty. And God's people said, Amen, Amen. You know that, that old song? The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven. My heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Ah, oh, who is like Jesus? No one. <laughs> no one. You know, I was reading this morning how Stephen gave his incredible testimony. Oh, I was so moved. So moved. What amazing knowledge he had of the scriptures to be able to say what he said in Acts chapter 7. And can you believe they killed him for that? I mean, he gave them their history with such perfection and beauty. And uh, they went into a rage, these people, and stoned him threw rocks at him and killed him. And what a blessed uh, prayer he prayed. You know, don't hold this to, to their charge, Lord. Wow. I'm amazed. I'm, uh, there's something about Stephen. It's so special. So special. When you think about the testimony he gave, and then what he prayed at the end. Don't punish them for this. In other words, don't judge them for this. Wow. A man, the, the only two people I know in the whole Bible that forgave their enemies when they were, when, when, when they were actually killing them. And that's the Lord first. When he gave his life for you and I. And when they crucified him, he said, Forgive them. They know not what they do. Wow. And Stephen is the only other man that did that. He forgave his enemies when they were killing him. To me, that's uh, amazing Christianity. That's Christianity. Mm. I don't think there's a word for it, is there? Such love for the Lord. Such love for the Lord beyond description. Precious Jesus, precious Jesus, to give Stephen that kind of power to endure and pray for his enemies that they be forgiven when they were killing him. That to me is remarkable, totally remarkable. There is no life like the Christian life, saints. No life like the Christian life. That's why I love to sing that song, The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day, that's an old song, by the way. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, this precious, wonderful Jesus, the sweeter he grows. Bill Gaither wrote that song, Bill and Gloria Gaither. And I love their worship. By the way, you really want to get blessed? Download Bill and Gloria Gaither. Their music is just incredible. Well, anyways, hello to Florence and hello to Akampa from Uganda. Hello to Grace. She said, I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy to have you, my dear. Hello to Phil. Hello to Princess Limo. And Satyendra. Uh, please pray for my son suffering from cancer. Lord, we pray for... Satyendra's son, and we ask you to heal that young boy, that young man from cancer in Jesus' mighty name for your glory. And God's people said, Amen. Hello to Rahul from India, and Tangru, and uh, Elisa 
from the Philippines. A lot of you are coming on. Okay, I want to start teaching. Lord, blessed be your name. Touch your people, I pray today. Bless them greatly in Jesus' name. I am going to show you how to intensify the power of God on your life. I'm telling you, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. And what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to begin with discussing the importance of staying awake in the spirit. Um, in Galatians, uh, in Ephesians, I should say, 5.14, we read, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Wow. Awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and then you'll know the light of the Lord. A sleeping Christian is compared to a dead sinner in this verse. Because it says, Awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead. Arise from the dead. Now this was written to believers. This was not written to the world. He's writing to the church in Ephesus and he says, Arise from the dead. Why? Because you're sleeping. So a sleeping Christian or a prayerless Christian is compared to a dead sinner. Now, there's a cry out of the Father's heart uh, today. And his cry is that the church be awakened and wake up from sleep. Because a sleeping church is a dead church. A sleeping church is a silent church. A sleeping church is a defeated church. We need the power of God today. We don't need uh, you know, powerlessness and be defeated by the enemy in the world. We want to see the power of God on our lives. So the Lord commands in Joel 3, 9, Wake up the mighty men. The second people wake up, they become mighty in the Lord. In other words, when they start praying. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to intensify your, your prayer life by tenfold. I know, I know you may not believe that it's in the Bible, but I'm going to show it to you. And I will teach on that tomorrow because I'm going to deal with fasting tomorrow because that's how you do it. Do you know that fasting intensifies the power of God in your life tenfold? Tenfold, that's right, you heard me right, maybe even more than that. And tomorrow I'm going to deal with the three types of fasting, the three different types of fasting, and what are they for? So if you're facing a problem in your life today where you say, I don't know what to do, fasting will show you the solution. Fasting will bring the miracle, I promise you. Fasting is so powerful because it intensifies the spiritual power in people's lives, even in the, in the demonic, you know, religions today that fast, demons are released through that. You wonder why some religions are spreading today around the world. Why are some religions spreading even faster than Christianity in some places? Because of fasting. The more people fast, the more their religion spreads, the more people come into it. So use wisdom on what I'm saying to you. Fasting increases power in both worlds, in the, in the spiritual world where God is, in the spiritual world where the devil is, okay? So Christians today are not fasting. Religions are, yeah. Unbelievers are, you bet they are, who believe in other things, but they don't believe in the Lord Jesus, I mean. So fasting releases amazing power. Glorious power, more than you realize. I'm going to show it to you in the Word, so don't you miss tomorrow. But I want to begin talking today about this, because God says in His wonderful Word, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Woe to them that are asleep. This is Amos 6.1. So this is how people lose the anointing. This is how people fall into sin. This is how people lose faith. This is how people get so messed up with the world and devils because they are not fasting, they're sleeping. Remember what happened to Samson? 
He lost the anointing while he slept. You know, I've said many times, the Holy Spirit always announces his arrival. He never announces his departure. Did you hear that, Chad? The Holy Spirit announces his arrival. He never announces his departure. So it says about Samson, he wished not that the Lord had departed. He didn't know that God had left him. Because he slept on her knee. Remember Delilah? He slept on her knee one too many times. And then the Holy Spirit was gone. The power of God was gone. And he didn't know it was gone. He tried to shake himself like at other times, thinking it's going to work this time. And it didn't work. So, now, when did, when did sin enter into, into Adam's life? What did he do? What was he doing when sin took hold? He was chewing. He was eating. What was Jesus doing when he began his ministry? He was fasting. Are you getting this? Yeah. Adam was eating and he brought disaster Jesus was fasting and he, and he brought victory. So the first Adam began his life with eating, disobeying God and eating the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. That's where he lost everything. And the second Adam, our wonderful Lord Jesus, begins his ministry fasting 40 days. And it says he came out out of that wilderness with the power of the Holy Ghost. Miracles began happening. There's a blessed scripture. And by the way, I mean, you can read this for, you, for yourself in Genesis chapter 3, beginning at verse 6 and 7, how Adam lost everything while eating, not fasting. Jesus, thank God, thank God. When the Lord began his ministry, he knew what to do with the Holy Spirit sent him, it says in one gospel, drove him into the wilderness. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights and the enemy came to tempt him and Satan lost the battle because Jesus was fasting. And Jesus understood. The Lord un understood the power of fasting. He knew it. Now, in 1 Corinthians 10, Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. I'm getting excited just thinking about this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 7. Here's what the Bible says, saying, So neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Meaning, when people don't fast, they become what? Idol worshippers. Did you know they were worshipping their own bodies by eating? Neither be what? Idolaters. Don't be idol worshippers, in other words. As were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. When people don't fast, the flesh takes over. And when the flesh takes over, they worship the flesh and they become, and they become servants to the flesh, frankly. You know that fasting releases us from idolatry? Not only from the demonic and the world, but even from idolatry. And from what? Fornication. Now the let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and 20,000. So people when say to me, you know, I have a problem with this and I have a problem with that. I, you know, I get some, some, some prayer requests, a lot of them in fact, of people having struggled with, with their own, you know, life and sin and this and this and that. And one poor fellow sent me uh, an email one day that he could not stop watching pornography. And there's only one answer to pornography. Fasting. <laughs> Wake up. Fasting. Fasting delivers people from pornography, from fornication, from idolatry. And here's what it says. From murmuring, because they were murmuring in verse 10. This is all the results of not fasting. So it says, neither be idolaters, as some of them were, because they, they, what did they do? They sat down, they ate and drank, rose up to play, and they, and they committed fornication. 
and they tempted Christ, and they murmured, and all these things happened to them for examples. They are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are coming. In other words, when the people didn't fast and just wanted to eat and play, and eat and drink and play, they fell into sin. There are certain demons that won't come out of people without fasting and prayer. Even the Lord told us that. And I don't want to get into some details here because I don't want to shake people up. But some things today in people's lives, they'll never be free from, and I'm talking about sexual problems, They'll never be free from without fasting. Because fasting brings people into self-deliverance. Now, if you're struggling with some of these things, I'm telling you, fast. Stop eating and fast. And don't just fast so you can look better. Fast so God can set you free and you'll be free from this thing. And while you're fasting, you'll probably start throwing up. Yeah, I've seen, it. I've seen this happen. When people fast, they, you, you don't need to go to someone and say, oh, please pray for me and get the devil out of me. Faster. He'll do it without someone praying for you. Let me ask you something. Who can you trust? Who can you trust today to go to them and say, pray for me, and they won't blab about it? Who can preachers trust? What if a man of God had a problem with some problem, whatever, who can that pastor go to? If he goes to some of his friends, they'll, they'll expose him. This is what's happening today. You know what? So Saturday, it's not what it used to be back in the early church when they protected each other. Today, they'll destroy you if you tell them. So what do you do? Fast. Fasting will spare you from your bondage and you'll be free and you don't have to depend on preachers who will go and blab about you out there. I know pastors today, I know pastors today that have some serious problems and they don't know who to go to because they don't know who to trust. They're, they're afraid to trust. When I went through my divorce, I went to one guy, listen, you know, this is going to shake you up. Chatty, I went to see a preacher known on TV preacher. And I felt I could confide in him about my problem with my divorce. That was in 2010, 11, and 12. The Lord restored me. Thank the Lord. Suzanne and I came back together. Thank you, Lord. We love each other. Thank you, Lord. Those three years were not exactly pleasant. And I went and told a pastor, who, <laughs> friend of mine, I thought, you know what he did? He got on the platform with thousands of people and told all those people and he didn't even have to say my name because they all knew it by the way he talked there's somebody on tv with a healing ministry da, 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 that has many crowds blah, 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 blah. and he began to tell them what i told him in confidence i was in shock i was in shock i thought who can we trust that's when i went to see jack hayford Thank God for Pastor Jack Hayford. He's the only man that I trusted and I still trust him because when I went to talk to him, he kept it between he and I and the Lord. Thank God for Pastor Jack Hayford. You know who else I trusted? Paul Crouch. Because Paul Crouch kept it between us. Thank God for Paul Crouch. You know who, who else I trusted? Oral Roberts. Thank God for Oral Roberts who kept everything between us. Because I needed people to pray with me. But I went to one guy, uh, the first one I went to, blew it all up. I thought, oh. So, there's still people out there you can trust. Thank God, thank God. But you got to find them, you got to know them, you know. But if you can't, fast. Just fast. And I did then, and by the way, I, I fa fasted for days. And, and that's what brought my, 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 my healing. Because Sue and I believe in fasting. And I, I just began fasting. And one day I woke up, I looked at my children, Jesse and, and Tashi were here at the house. I said, girls, I'm going back with your mom. And they began crying and I began crying. And the Lord spoke to me, now do it. And Suzanne was already showing a lot of, you know, love and healing and all that was already happening. But I didn't realize then, Fasting was really doing the job already. So it's powerful, I'm telling you. There are times you pray and just 
nothing happens. You fast, wham, it happens just like that. Hallelujah, dear Lord. Okay, let me just keep talking about this. In 2 Peter 2, verse 19, it says, For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. So, Adam failed because he was overcome and began eating. So, but when Jesus fasted, you know what? I, I love reading. I love reading Luke uh, chapter 4 because in Luke chapter 4, when he came out of that fast, Chad, when he came out of that fast, here's what it says, okay? It says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led of the Spirit into the wilderness and now he's tempted, okay? But he's fasting. Why is he, why is he full of the Holy Spirit? Because he was fasting. But look what it says in verse 14. I love this. I love this. And Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit into Galilee. So he came in with power. He goes out with power because he was fasting the whole time. Do you know when you start fasting, you go in and come out with power? So verse 1, he comes in with power. Verse 14, he comes out with power. And I think that's wonderful, wonderful. And to see how God used him so mightily, because, and, and that's what caused him to say in verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is now upon me. He's anointed me. Why? He was fasting. So fasting is so powerful, it, it, it actually gives you dominion and restores it if you lost it. It gives you dominion and restores it if you lose it. Someone said, if a person can fast, he can do anything. I believe that. Uh, another man said, because when we control the appetite, we're in control of the flesh king of our body. So if a person can fast, he can do anything. Because fasting controls the flesh king. Because when we, don't, we, when we do not control the flesh king, then the Bible tells us uh, we will commit adultery. You know what? This is in the Bible. Jeremiah chapter 5. Look, this is incredible. When people do not fast, they fall into sin. So it's time to wake up, okay? Jeremiah. You know, I can say other things, but I need to be careful here about some, some other religions and what they do when they, what happens when they, when, they, when they fast. I was telling dear Chad that last night, and he, he kind of was... That kind of uh, got your attention, didn't it, Chad? Yes, say, say it out loud so they can hear you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because some religions, people, some religions who are required to fast yearly and they fast for a long time, they, it's amazing what power builds up in their life, okay? But it's not the kind of power you and I want, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so in Jeremiah 5, 7, look what it says. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 7 says, How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. Watch this. When I had fed them to the full, what did they do? They committed adultery. And they began to assemble themselves by troops in harlots' houses. Wow. When people don't fast, they fall into sin. In this case, God says, Jeremiah 5, 7, they fell into adultery and into whoredoms, fornication. Because not controlling this flesh king will cause people to forsake God. I'm, I just said something powerful. When people don't fast, they forsake God. I'm telling you. Fasting keeps you walking with Jesus. That's why the Lord talked about it. That's why he himself talked about fasting. Why do you think he was fasting? Now, you know, I don't want to hear the excuse, well, I have the presence of God and I have the bridegroom, so I don't need to fast. Who told you that? 
I asked one man, do you fast? He said, no, I have a bridegroom. <laughs> when Jesus was on earth, they didn't fast because he was with them physically. And guess what? He did the fasting for them. The disciples didn't fast because Jesus did the fasting for them. He often fasted himself. So when they came and said, well, the Pharisees, they fast, and, and John the Baptist's you know, disciples, they fast, and so on and so forth, and the disciples of the Pharisees, but why don't your disciples fast? He said, because the bridegroom is still with them. But when the bridegroom leaves, they will fast. Meaning to keep him around by fasting, to keep his presence by fasting. So when that preacher said to me, well, I have the bridegroom with me, I thought, oh, I don't want to hear that. Because it really kind of wasn't exactly what the Bible teaches. So, fasting keeps people walking with God. Because in Deuteronomy chapter 32, chapter 32, and tomorrow we're going to deal about three, with about three fasts. What are the three fasts mentioned in the Bible? How do we get in and how do we get out? And, what, what, and for what reason? What, and what must we be uh, asking for? So Deuteronomy 32, verse 15. I'm almost done, almost done. Don't leave me, you sweet people. But Jeshurun, meaning Israel. That's, that was one of the name of Israel. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, meaning you're not, you're not fasting. Thou art grown thick, you're not fasting. Thou art covered with fatness, you're not fasting. Then he forsook God, which made him. People who don't fast forsake the Lord. You know those people that are walking away from the faith right now, like that, that uh, worship leader, the two of them so, so far walked away from the faith who are famous people? I can bet my life on it. They were not people who knew how to fast or even fasted. Because when people don't fast, they forsake the kingdom and they forsake the faith. No one that ever fasted walked away from the Lord Jesus. No one that I've ever met. No one. I feel the anointing just talking to you. No one ever leaves the faith who is someone who fasts and prays. It's impossible. Impossible. But those that don't, well, they're in trouble. You know, I understand now what, what Paul uh, meant in 1 Corinthians 9, 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself be a castaway, because he fasted. What was the thing he did when he met the Lord on the road to Damascus? What was, what was he doing afterwards? He was fasting for how many days? Three days. And Ananias came and laid hands on him. Remember that? He began his life in the Lord fasting. And how often he talked about him fasting. He, he said, in fasting, often. Read it in your Bible. In fasting, often, he said. That's what kept him. And that's what I believe he meant by, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Jesus, I give you praise for this. Lord, speak to your people right now. Let them know the importance of fasting so they will not ever again neglect it. And Lord, bring them to the place of liberty and glory and power. In Jesus' name, where your power will be intensified in their life for your glory and honor, and God's people said, Amen. I feel such an, an, an anointing. Lord, release that anointing. on. Come on, lift your hands, receive it. Release that anointing on the people now. Release that anointing on the people now, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And now it's time to give to the Lord's work. Don't you dare shut me out now. It's time to give to the Lord's work. It's His word. It's His command. Giving is not an advice. Giving is a command. Uh, when we don't give, we disobey. When we, dis when we disobey, we sin. Jesus didn't say give. And I advise you, he said no, give. He didn't say anything else, but give. Giving is an order. It's a heavenly command. It shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shake it together, running over, shall man give it to your bosom. If you give. Honor the Lord with your substance. That's not an advice. It's a command. We honor the Lord with our substance, with the first fruits of everything he gives us, and then we're going to be blessed. Righteousness puts you in line to prosper. 
and the only way to come out of financial struggle is do what Psalm 126 verse 5 and 6 says. A man going so, when, while he's sowing, he's weeping, but he comes back rejoicing, bringing his harvest with him. The only way out of crisis that I have ever known in 40 some, 46 years of ministry, and even before that, giving works. Giving works because it's God's word. God is not a liar that he should, God is not a liar. He's not a man that, that he should lie. What God said, he meant. There's no lie in him. He is the truth itself. Jesus is the truth. The only one who lies is the devil. He is the liar. Jesus is the truth. Hallelujah. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He's the truth. His word, you can stake your life on thus, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus forever. And if you love him, let's obey him right now. Come on. You can give right now on the platform you're watching. Dear goodness, I feel the anointing. This is the time to really give, you know. When there's a stir in the atmosphere, that's the time to give because that's when the seed really works. Okay, so right now on the platform you're watching me on, what it says, donate or just go to benihin.org or you can text it, text it. B H M B for boy, H for Henry, M for Michael. And then the number four, five. 777 45777. Lord bless your people as they give, prosper them, increase them in Jesus' name. God's people said amen. Tomorrow, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm sure be as anointed as I'm today, because I'm gonna talk about the three different fasts in the Bible. Why and what are the results and how to come in and how to come out in a way where it's not gonna hurt you physically, okay? So I'll see you tomorrow and today I'll see all of you who are a part of BHI and if you're not a part of BHI, you don't know what you're missing. Join BHI today for $25 a month. You will be blessed beyond words. School, real Bible school, it's on. Benihin Institute. Love you. Bye-bye.